Cornelius Matthews October 28, 1817 to March 25, 1889, was an American writer, best known for his crucial role in the formation of a literary group known as Young America in the late 1830s, with editor Evett Dewekink and author William Gilmore Sims. Biography <inaudible> 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 Matthews was born on October 28, 1817, in Port Chester, New York to Abijah Matthews and Catherine Van Cott. He attended Columbia College, graduated New York University in 1834. He then attended law school and passed the New York Bar in 1837. At the time, American literature was generally regarded as necessarily inferior to the British, and American authors were encouraged to follow English models closely. This at least was the view espoused by the literary elite of New York, who tended to orbit the influential and conservative editor of the Knickerbocker magazine, Lewis Gaylord Clark. Matthews vehemently disagreed, and called for a new literary style that would express a distinctly American identity, although this style was not to be a populist or demotic one. Their politics was limited to a call for international copyright law, to curb the wholesale copyright infringement of American literature in England. Stylistically, Matthews favored an approach that emphasized the cosmopolitan sweep and diversity of American society, bolder and more philosophical than the sort of cozy humor associated with the Knickerbocker magazine, although Matthews did not refuse to appear in its pages, but not as abstruse and Germanic as the transcendentalist literature of Boston. Matthews' panacea was the emulation of Rabelais, whose Gargantua and Pantagruel, he believed, managed to advance philosophical penetration without etherealizing its subject matter. For two years 1840-1842, Matthews and Dewekink wrote for and co-edited Young America's Uneven Journal, Arcturus, publishing also Nathaniel Hawthorne, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and James Russell Lowell. Matthews coined the name for the Young America movement in an 1845 speech. As he described the movement. Here, in New York, is the seat and stronghold of this young power, but, all over the land, day by day, new men are emerging into activity, who partake of these desires, who scorn and espise the past pettiness of the country, and who are ready to sustain any movement toward a better and nobler condition. Throughout the period of his principal literary activity, the 1840s and 1850s, Matthews contributed to and or helped to edit all manner of American periodicals, including The New Yorker, The Comic World, The New York Dramatic Mirror, The American Monthly Magazine, The New York Review, The New York Revalley, and a would-be rival to the Knickerbocker magazine, the rapidly moribund Yankee Doodle. In 1853, he published A Pen and Ink Panorama of New York City, a collection of essays, character sketches, and sketches on the scenery of New York. Although he wrote several satirical plays, his most successful play was Witchcraft, or The Martyrs of Salem, 1846, which was more serious in tone and written in blank verse. Cornelius Matthews died in New York City in 1889. Topic. Critical response and influence Reviewing Matthews's Wakanda in Graham's magazine Edgar Allan Poe wrote that it had no merit whatever, while its faults are of that rampant class which if any schoolboy could be found so uninformed as to commit them, any schoolboy should remorselessly be flogged for committing. Of Matthews's novel Puffer Hopkins, Poe called it one of the most trashy novels that ever emanated from an American press. Matthews was such a strong proponent of copyright law, he was considered a joke by some in the literary scene. Critic and anthologist Rufus Wilmot Griswold included Matthews in his Prose Writers of America 1847, but criticized his vehement push for nationalist literature. Mr. Matthews, Griswold said wrote very good English and very good sense until he was infected with the disease of building up a national literature." Charles Frederick Briggs satirized Matthews in the novel Trippings of Tom Pepper, depicting him as a lawyer named Mr. Ferocious who frequently interrupts others to advocate literature which is fresh, home-born, and free of foreign influence. Margaret Fuller, however, supported his advocacy for a national literature and said that Matthew's play Witchcraft was an example of a true, genuine, invincible Americanism. 
Elizabeth Barrett Browning prefaced her poem, A Rhapsody of Life's Progress, with a quote, Fill all the stops of life with tuneful breath, and note on Matthews, An American poet, as remarkable, in thought and manner, for a vital sinewy vigor, as the right arm of Pathfinder. American literary historian Perry Miller, writing in The Raven and the Whale, suggested that Herman Melville was influenced by Matthew's Behemoth 1839 when writing Moby Dick. Melville invited Matthews to his home in 1850. Topic. Selected list of works Novels The Motley Book 1838. Behemoth, A Legend of the Mound Builders 1839. The Career of Puffer Hopkins 1842. Big Abel and the Little Manhattan 1845. Moneypenny, or, The Heart of the World 1849. Chanticleer, A Thanksgiving Story of the Peabody Family 1850. Poetry Wakanda, The Master of Life 1841. Poems on Man in His Various Aspects Under the American Republic 1843 The Indian Fairy Book 1855, reprinted in 1877 under the title The Enchanted Moccasins Plays The Politician 1840, never produced Witchcraft, or The Martyrs of Salem 1846 Jacob Leisler 1848 False Pretenses, or, Both Sides of Good Society, 1855.